Resistance joining us now, streaming live from Afghanistan, Marine Colonel Randall Newman, commander of the Regimental Combat Team 7. And we do have a lot of delay. I just want to let our viewers know at home. Uh, so bear with us as we, as we go through this. Uh, Colonel, it is so good to have you with us. To give us a sense, uh, now that this, uh, this first Marine group is in, of this 30,000 surge that the president has authorized, what's it like there on the ground? How is it going? Well, it's great to be here with you as well, and, and I think the message I would bring to you from the Marines and Sailors here of Regimental Combat Team 7, and most importantly, 3rd Battalion, 4th Marines, who uh, are conducting uh, Cobra's anger up in Nauzad, Afghanistan, is that things are going great. Uh, they've gone up there with the intent of providing uh, the city of Nauzad back to the Afghan people, and initially we, we've been able to accomplish all the objectives we've sought to accomplish. We continue to work up there, but things are going very well. Now, the Marines that have been sent in there, and I know you, you know, thank you for all of your service, because I read through your commitment to our country and to the things that we've done in Iraq and in the Persian Gulf, and we thank you for that. Where, are these Marines coming in, you know, are they fresh, are they coming from Iraq, and, and you know, they're all uh, not home for Christmas, uh, we should point out to everybody. Tell us about your group. Well, you know, the whole Regimental Combat Team 7 is, is dispersed throughout a very large AO or area of operations here in Helmand River, Valley, River Valley, and we number about 5,000 Marines and sailors. But going direct to the operation you're talking about, Cobra's Anger, 3rd Battalion, 4th Marines, uh, not, not a unit that was sent here as a result of any recent decision. We've been here for a few months now, uh, and this was an operation that would have occurred uh, no matter what the, the decision on, on increase of forces here in Afghanistan or not. Uh, so we're, we're seeing progress here everywhere we go and stay. The Marines and sailors are able to give back a, a chunk of the, uh, the livelihood to the Afghan people. Uh, and it's really impressive to see the Afghan people are extremely proud and grateful people, but we're giving them an immense gift this holiday season by having your loved ones, loved ones of your audience there at home, coming over here, serving our nation, and most importantly, giving fellow man back a chance to determine how their future comes out. Mm -hmm. So things here look really good. Well, we're certainly glad to hear that, Colonel. Uh, there's a story this morning that, that came across through the Associated Press, uh, and, it, and it paints a very difficult picture about the, the people who are being trained to be police in Afghanistan, saying that you know, many of them are very young, uh, illiterate farmers. Uh, they tell stories about you know, candy that was brought for children in Afghanistan being taken by these you know, young Afghan uh, police, uh, would be you know, trained to be police, and that it's very, very, very challenging. What's your response to that? Oh, everything is challenging when you're trying to, to bring back a, a chunks of a country and give them back their government, their own security forces, and then provide them the opportunity to build. It wouldn't be no different there at home if we tried to take a, a group of people and, and then sort out the people that we could rely upon to ensure security for a population living in a community. We would have some of those who would meet the mark, some of those who wouldn't, and some that need our help to improve. What we're here to do is help those, those Afghan national security forces both police and armed, uh, identify the guys that can serve their country, uh, help them improve their skills so that they're capable of maintaining the security that we help provide here, uh, and then transition it over to them. So there are numerous challenges, I won't deny that, but they're not, they're not something that we can't overcome. Uh, we know how to overcome it through good training, mentoring, and partnering with the Afghan forces so that we can make sure that in the end, they get a security force that they can trust and utilize to ensure their own security. When you look at, so much has been said about this 2011 July deadline to start to bring uh, some of our Marines and some of the troops there home. Does that seem, you know, obviously that, that's the mission given to you from your commander in chief, and I, and I understand that that's your mission. How, how does it feel to you when you look at the, the job that you've been given personally uh, in terms of achievement level? Well, you know, I, I don't get much news out here, so I don't know all the details about what you're talking about. I, I have heard tell that there's a, a rumored deadline, but, you know, honestly, it wouldn't change a bit of what we do today, tomorrow, next week, next month. Uh, what we're over here to do is to provide that security bubble under which the Afghan government security forces can come in and retake control of the population centers here in Helmand province. We continue to do that right up until any deadline that's provided to us, whether it be 2011, 2012, or beyond. 
We're going to continue to do that. Your Marines and sailors will continue to do that. Uh, and I think that uh, good things will come from that. Everywhere we go and stay, we see good things uh, that come to the Afghan people, and we see progress here in Helmand uh, province. You'll continue to see that right up until they ask us to come home. Colonel, just on a personal note before I let you go, I, I know it must be hard for you and for all of the men and women to be away uh, during the holidays at Christmas. What, what do you do to try to make it you know, special in some way uh, for, the, for the good men and women uh, that you're working with there? Well, you're right. They are great men and women, known to us by our nation. So thanks to your audience for letting them come over here and serve with us. We greatly appreciate it. Um, we'll give them a special meal. Marine sailors like to eat, so we'll try and give them a special meal no matter where they are. Uh, most importantly, those will still be amongst family. I mean, I think the thing to remember is that, yeah, they're not around their traditional family that they would be during the Thanksgiving and, and Christmas holidays. But, but an environment like we live in over here and like we operate in over here breeds family. And we have a very tight family, so they'll be amongst family on those days. And they'll be thankful for, for what they've got both at home and also for what they've got here. Because on that day, on Christmas Day, I'll guarantee you that your Marines and sailors will walk out into some community here in Afghanistan and they'll see success. They'll see progress from their presence alone. And again, as I said earlier, I can think of no greater gift that can be given to a fellow man than to give him the opportunity to determine his livelihood. And, and we're doing that for the Afghan people this holiday season. Uh, and so we feel very fortunate uh, to be able to give that gift to a fellow man. Uh, probably our only regret is that we can't share it with our family, but we'll be able to when we come on back home. Well, yeah, you're terrific, uh, Colonel, and I thank you so much for spending your time with us today. Uh, and our hearts and our prayers go out to you and all of uh, the men and women that are on that mission with you in Afghanistan. Uh, you take care, and we hope to see you soon, sir. Right. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. You bet. What a great guy. Ugh, wow. The best. Really? Those guys, they're amazing. You know, they, they're such an incredibly impressive. And uh, you, you can see people. the conditions they deal with every day. And now it's wintertime.